what do our competitors have to say about us? Well, here's an article that appeared in the National Post. It was about our coverage of one of my favorite subjects, David Suzuki. David Suzuki is a poster boy for why Canada needs the Sun's brand of journalism, written by Jonathan Kay, who joins us in studio. Now, Jonathan, welcome to the show. How are you? Good. You've been here before. Now, you're a competitor. I used to work at the Post way back yeah. in the day with you. But, I mean, we're, we're rival companies. I mean, every dollar you earn is probably a dollar we don't. But tell me what you think about the Sun's place in the media firmament. Well, what I admire is you take on sacred cows. Uh, and David Suzuki, obviously, is one of them. He's a, kind of a, a hallowed figure in Canada. And, uh, yeah, I do admire the way you're unconstrained by taboos in your selection of targets. Um, and I think, broadly speaking, it is good to have at least one, what I would call a dissident voice on both sides of the political spectrum. And right now, I think you're occupying what I would call the dissident right. I think you're right. I mean, I like to use the phrase rebel journalism. Right, right. I mean, that's a little bit of fun. But I think we are dissidents, on, and not just on political issues. Socially, I mean, you, you made a remark once that, I mean, Canada's a fairly small place. And if, you, if you're in the media, political, cultural circles, you bump into the people you write about. I mean, I savaged Michael Ignatieff, and then one day, actually you were there, I went to a Writers' Trust event, and we checked in at the same time. It's uncomfortable to be really tough on cultural leaders in Canada, because odds are you're going to bump into them at some dinner party someday. It's tough to do that. The problem with Canada is it's a small country. There's uh, Toronto, Ottawa, Montreal, there's a couple of hundred people who are the elite editors, they're the columnists, they're um, you know, well-known professors. And what happens is if you're in journalism for a long time, eventually you create friendships with those people. You see them at dinner parties, you see them at award shows handing little statuettes to each other. Um, and you become constrained in what you choose to say about them. And I think David Suzuki is the sort of person who there are a lot of journalists in Canada who, well, you know, one day, hopefully, I will be in that uh, echelon of famous Canadians. And, and they do. It may be unconscious self-censorship, self but it's self-censorship. One of the things I admire about Sun is that um, I don't think there, there's the same sense that they are in that little echo chamber of elitists. That they, I mean, it's almost self-conscious the way they say, we are outside that, you know, that mainstream that aspires to that respectable status, we are going to be outside of that. And again, I think there is some value in that. I mean, that, yeah. well, sometimes, I mean, especially when the rest of the uh, media seems to be in a in a clump, when everyone agrees on something, I think it's important to have a counterweight. I mean, we've talked about this before. You've come on the show to talk about Omer Cotter. I think that most of the other newspapers in this country and TV stations wanted to bring him back to Canada. But the Sun, we were on a campaign to stop him. We didn't succeed. But I think every now and then, I, I use the phrase media party, consensus media, where I say, well, look at that. The, the Post and the Globe and the Star and the CBC, they've taken one point of view. I almost feel like I want to take a dissident point of view just to say, hey, I don't all agree. I'm not part of that team. I mean, it, it's not, I'm not to say, uh, to say that I'm always right and they're always wrong. But I think we need to have a counterweight sometimes. I think sometimes it helps to have the mindset of an, of an activist. Um, one thing I've, I've told people about you, my opinion is that you're an activist who, who has a TV show. Um, and I think there's a lot of people that sound like that. Um, and sometimes you need an activist sensibility to really be a contrarian. I think Teresa Spence is a good example, some of the coverage you had, uh, the Occupy movement. Uh, you guys didn't buy the social justice angle. You were very much about illegal occupation of public spaces. Um, and I think it's very much an activist mentality. And again, you know, I think the, the National Post is quite different from the Globe and CBC and CTV and the way they cover things. But we are not what I would call activists mm. when it comes to the issues that we cover. Well, you're right. And, you know, I, I am never shy about saying I don't think I've ever called myself a reporter in my life. I mean, I do not go out and say, I have no point of view. Let me gather all the facts and come back and whatever I find. Out. I, I know what I believe yeah. in. And... And I don't hide that. What bugs me sometimes, like I read the Toronto Star, and, and sometimes I say, well, this looks like a news report, but this is very ideological. This is the opposite of me. I mean, I, I'm right wing, they're left wing. I call myself an opinion commentary show. Uh, they call themselves reporting, but I don't, I, I, that's what bugs me about the media party sometimes is that when, the, when they're actually on a mission, they're pretending, oh, no, 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 no. We just think Justin Trudeau is great. That's not, that's not an affection we have. It's just straight report. That's what bugs me. That might be a sort of a, a drawback of, of what you call the media party. However, on the other hand, to give the Toronto Star their, their credit where it's due, they, they do have hundreds of reporters. They do a, do a yeah. fairly good job of reporting. And again, uh, to be fair, that's, I think, one of the drawbacks of Sun is that 
you're heavy on the activism. I think some of your critics would say sometimes you're light on some of the news that a conventional outlet like, like, like the Toronto Star or the National Post would supply. Um, and I think that's the, that's the stress you sometimes see in the way Sun pre presents itself. It's a news channel, but there's a lot of activism, sometimes not as much news as some of the other, other well, outlets. I, I like to think we split it. Our primetime guys do the commentary. I mean, we've done some amazing on-the-ground reporters. I mean, in places where, like, for example, Lisa Morozik has gone to Indian bands, the Kawakatoose Indian band. I don't think a reporter's ever set foot on there. So, I mean, I, I take your point. And listen, you're a very generous critic to come on the show and be gentle and friendly towards us. I love the fact that the Sun has added to the to the array of voices out there. I think the more voices, the better. And I appreciate you for accepting that because some of our competitors don't want the sun around. Jonathan K. National Post, great to see you again today. Thank you.